Welcome to the first tutorial for the newly released MP System version 3. In this simple tutorial, we'll be integrating Steam into the MP System and packaging the project for a standalone Steam game. To do this, you'll need Visual Studio installed. With a new project installed in its own folder, nothing new has been added yet. First, I want to bring your attention to the config folder and the default engine.ini. Here, we need to add some code, so that the game can communicate with the correct Steam server. Follow the first link in the description and you'll get to the online subsystem documentation by Epic. Go to the Steam subsection, scroll down to finish settings and just copy and paste the highlighted script into the default engine.ini. It doesn't really matter where, just that it's in its own section. Close and save. Let's download the advanced session plugin via the second link in the description, which currently can only be downloaded via the link on the developer's page for Unreal Engine 5. Maybe in the future you'll be able to download it directly from the plugins page within the editor, but currently this is the only way to go. Once the download has completed, open the zip file and all you need from this is within the advanced session folders. Extract advanced sessions and advanced steam sessions out and delete the rest. Now, in the main directory, create a new folder called Plugins and paste both folders with its contents within our new Plugins folder. Open up the editor. First of all, let's make sure that the plugins have installed by going to the top right corner and opening the Settings drop-down menu. Open Plugins, on the left you should see Installed Plugins and there you have the Advanced Steam Session and Advanced Sessions Plugins by Joshua Statzer installed. Now we have some work to do within 6 blueprints. The good news is that the required changes are already highlighted and labeled with comment boxes. First, let's go to the widget directory and open up the intro widget. Go to graph in the top right corner and let's do what the comment box suggests. Drag off the PC menu getter and type in get player name. This should be located under the advanced sessions player info. Connect our new node string output to the to text string. Press compile and save and with that, we can check off our first task. Next, we go to the level selection widget and in here, we have to edit three places within the graph menu. The first comment box hints us to get the extra settings function by dragging off from the server to join getter. Let's connect that up with the flow of the graph. Drag off from the blue dot and type in string to get get session property string. Connect that up as well as found to set string and get the pink setting value as the value for the string for the setting name. We have to type in map name without space to declare its designator. Done with this part, let's find the second and third comment box. Here we have to delete the find sessions placeholder and get find sessions advanced by right clicking with the mouse into empty space. In the search bar, type find sessions advanced and connect it to the flow of the graph. On the left, hook up the player controller and set the max amount of players to what you desire, for example 999. The rest can be left with its default values. Next, hook up the result to the array of the for each loop node and connect the pin on success to the loop. On failure goes to the reroute node below. Then drag off the blue dot to get extra settings. Link it to the flow of the graph and remove the old get server name node. From extra settings we again get the string properties and hook up the setting value to the empty string input. This time we type in session name, again without space to declare its designation. And that's it for the level selection widget, compile, save, and close. Two more left for the widget blueprints. A quick one will be the settings widget. Here we just have to get the player name from our player controller, just like we did within the intro widget. Hook the player name node up with the empty string input, this simply gets the Steam name and can be checked in-game in the Settings menu. Compile and save. Now we need to open up the Sessions widgets, where we first of all have to get the extra settings. 
again from the sessions to join getter and hook it up with the flow of the graph. Next, delete the placeholder reroot nodes and the get server name node. From extra settings we need to once again get the get session property string. Duplicate that, as we need it twice, and hook both of them up to the sequence node. Make sure that the extra settings pin is connected to that of the extra settings node, otherwise you'll get a compile error. Hook up found to each set text box. This is important so that the servers can be found in the server listing game. Next you need to hook up the settings value to the empty strings pins. The setting names respectively will be map name for the lower and the top one will be sessions name, again without spacing. Now this can be compiled, saved, and closed. Alright, with that done we need to go out of the widgets folder and into the core folder where the most essential blueprints are listed. A quick one will be the player controller, called PCMPS. There we just need to set the player name, so instead of a getter, this time we need to get a setter. So from self, drag off and type, set player name. This should be located under the advanced sessions directory. Link up the flow of the graph and also make sure that the string is connected to the input off the player name function. Compile, save, and this can be close too. Last but not least, we need to go into the game instance MPS blueprint. We need to delete the create sessions placeholder and replace it with the create advanced sessions function. So as before, right click and type in create advanced sessions and this again should be located under advanced sessions. Put that in place and hook up the flow of the graph. On the right, the first node can be connected to the free hanging reroot node above. This is just a failsafe system to ensure that you get back to the main menu in case you disconnect or the server times out. On failure connects to end session and on success connects to open level so that the multiplayer level will actually be loaded. On the left side of the function, hook up the get land settings to the input of get LAN. Link the player amount to the connected player's input and link player controller to its respective input. Connect the array to the make array node. From that, we need to drag off and type, make literal session property string. Duplicate that node, as we need it twice, and hook it up to the custom event. Link up the string values to the respective string values of the custom event session name and map name and make sure that you type in the same name for the keys, again without spacing, to match the designation we used in the widget graphs. Compile, save, and this can be closed as well. And this is it for the blueprint editing part. Now, all we need to do is to create a new C++ class. This will convert this project into a hybrid project between blueprint and code. But no worries, this won't involve any coding, we just need to make the connection to properly integrate Steam. To do so, we go to tools and select new C++ class. The default empty class will do, so press next. We can also use the default name my class, hit create class. It takes a moment to create the files. A new pop-up will occur saying that the project now includes sources. Please close the editor and build from your IDE, which means from Visual Studio. The next window asks if we want to open Visual Studio, but instead of pressing yes, we press no, because like the message before said, we need to close the editor first for this to function. Let's check out our main directory. As you can see, this has changed a bit. A few folders have been added and most importantly, a Visual Studio SLN file. Open this up and wait for it to load. Once fully loaded, located on the right side is the main directory. Find UE5MP system v3. Right click on it and press build. This recompiles the project and integrates C++. This shouldn't take too long, for me it took about one minute. Once this has finished, you can close Visual Studio and reopen the editor. You can directly test if it worked within the editor by creating a standalone game from play. However, we want to create a real standalone game, which is packaged and ready to ship. To do this, we go to Platforms, Windows and hit Package Project. Choose a directory, where you want to package it in. This can take up to several minutes depending on the size of your project and your system's performance. 
It took about 3 to 4 minutes for me. Don't worry if you get a few yellow error messages during the packaging process. In the end, it's important that you will be greeted with a text that says build successful. Once done packaging, you can close the editor and open up your newly created game. Make sure Steam is running in the background. Upon startup, you should now be greeted with a Steam pop-up message at the bottom right. Let's go to settings and check if your Steam account name is showing up. Note that if you were asked in the beginning to type in your name, the game couldn't fetch your Steam name, or a mistake has been made inside the intro widget. Something to note is that the display mode defaults to borderless and chooses the maximum resolution. Let's fix this by changing it to full screen. Press apply, we need to exit settings and enter it again to unlock the resolution options. Choose your desired resolution. Let's edit our loadout quickly before we test the multiplayer section. Let's hit multiplayer and press host match. Create a name, choose the player amount, and choose a map. Press host match. If everything works, we will load into the level. Your server should now also show up in the server browser. This was the first part of a tutorial series for the MP system version 3. I hope this was clear and useful to you and got to the point. Thanks for watching.